Alright boys, welcome back to Pika's PD. We're gonna do a brand new series called Beginner's Guide. This is something like Stanley Parable. Yep. It's been some time since I did a uh, commentary because I think hard about doing commentaries because I don't know sometimes if like the game is so long I don't know whether I want to do a commentary because it might be long winded. Yep. But this game definitely needs some commentary because it's a thoughtful game, you know. Alright, let's begin the game. Yes, audio is on. Yes, I think we understood that We're playing 50 million games. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level oh. for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together, is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Koda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay. okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Okay, wow. Really, he made whisper machine evacuate. Whoa, damn, son. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Dude, this is literally like a typical new sound. <laughs> It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then yeah. clearly there are no enemies anywhere. 
You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately, we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin shoot evacuation. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Okay. Damn, son. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? I'm jumping. What? I died. <laughs> Let me pause here for a second. <laughs> what you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Okay. This game is interesting so far, guys. I, I would say it's really... Um, do I need, do I need to tap in? Oh, what? <laughs> Damn, son. Wow. Yep. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. but. What's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Okay, let's go. Ah, there we are. The puzzle's behind her. Okay. Oh, yep. oh, wow. In this game, you can only walk backwards. <laughs> Damn, son. What? What? <laughs> so it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Man, if this guy sold all these mini games, he would have been rich. When she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. Okay, cool. But if the future is always behind her, how will she find the strength to confront it? Nice. It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Genius. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Oh my god, no. Fucking Slenderman. You are now entering. Ah, oh, hell nah. I can't do horror, guys. No jump scares, please. Ah. And that's it. Okay, wow. the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. It better be good, son. It better be good. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. No okay. kid. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like 
that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? Sorry guys, I was adjusting my mic. So here we are, back again. Uh, he buys the keys, Drew. Whoa. I got a feeling the staircase is never ending. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, oh. the door at the top of the stairs opens. Uh -huh. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. There we go. Good stuff. Okay. Stand on an X, stand on a bear. What, what the fuck? A room that's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. Uh huh. Okay. Koda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Do I have to press you to surrender? Um... Ah! What the fuck? Okay. Man, what game is this, man? Is this like a fucking compendium of like... All the 90s games? I'm totally fine with it, I'm just asking. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Ah, fuck. That was never good puzzles. What? That's it? What's it filled with? COVID-19 gas. I don't know, man. What do you want me to do, man? I'm, I suck at puzzles, guys. Okay, I got an idea. Why don't we lock ourselves inside? Boom. And here we go. Don't forget there that solution because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. Ah, we're gonna shoot. see it a lot. What's the tree dot here? That's some Sam Fisher. Sam Fisher stuff. Ah, great. This is some time loop. So that what? seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Wow, what the f- <laughs> Okay... Okay... How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Okay. Ah, again. Aha! Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay. Fastest loading screen, man. What? Let's talk about video game development for a second. 
Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Uh, thank you. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine wow. called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. Oh my god. Fucking platformers. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture no, no, of those no, no, games no, no, to no. notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing oh, wow. linear boxy corridors. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna jump in. This is a long way down. What? Oh, it's a glass. Some Prometheus shit happening here. What? What? What is this, huh? Damn. What? Wow. A way out. Number two. Uh. Ah. Ah. This prison. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Yes. Uh, what? Ah. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. <laughs> Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Why you fucking freezer? What the fuck? All right. It's fucking the puzzle walking. again, with the exact same solution as the last time. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Oh, isn't this Tenny terrible? Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Okay. For the first tree. <laughs> we found out after all we only just met. Alright, tree it is. Bitch. Oh, really? Ah, oh, so sad. Uh, you, you think you want to get through, but trust me, let me describe it for you. Alright, let me describe it for you, let me tell you all about what is over there. Alright, tree then. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> okay. Wow. 
What? I'm gonna fuck this up one by one. What blank space? Ooh. Two. What? <laughs> I. G. Thanks. Ooh, listen. Nice. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Oh, I thought it was going to be never ending. Wow. Speaking of claustrophobia. What? Damn. Dude, this... This looks like fucking Splinter Cell. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell okay. you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination. Uh -huh. Which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. Uh -huh. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Why are there shadows of four directions? That's fucking weird, man. You're not supposed to have any shadows. What the fuck? Multiplayer time, baby. What? Leaf notes. It's just weird. Really? Um, okay. <laughs> nice room, not. <laughs> what the fuck? How do I leave messages, man? Come on. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. <laughs> All of the notes that you're gonna see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first God game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. Can we jump? Ah, fuck, we can't. We have to go the long route, god damn it. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. Well, is that what you want? You, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. Wow. I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. I, I am lazy to read everything. I don't hear any chimes. Oh, that chimes. Hey, don't bother, lol. So get off. Come on, man. What? Oh, none of my watch, boys. Take my hand. Let's go, let's go. Ah, fuck. I can't jump. Come on, man. Ooh. Okay. What is that painting? 
does not matter if you ever get over there. Very good game. Wow. I think I'm not going. Yep. Ah, uh, get a counselor. Is it no? What is this? Okay. Some serious issues you got there, son. Some serious issues. Yep. Exactly. Stop pretending. What the fuck? What is this? Uh, okay. Can I run? Come on, man. Not a fan of this. Let's go, let's go, let's go. At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Okay. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Uh -huh. Oh my god, this time right there. Yeah. Some freaky shit right there, man. Damn. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Um. Right. Ah, oh, there we go. Damn, nice house. See, like, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just oh, walk to no. the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. Okay. Uh, put a giant hole. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go have to put a giant hole. <coughs> what? That's not a hole. What the fuck? What? I asked for a hole, you idiots. Uh, let's put a 10 stove line up against the wall. Ah, so it doesn't matter what I choose. Ups. Ups la, it's... It's like, whatever you do, they're just gonna do, they're just, they're just gonna place whatever they want to do, you know. It's like the fucking corporate world. So. Tables were invented 335. Bitch. But let me guess, yep, you're gonna put it there anyway. There's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It's kind of just weird for weirdness's sake. 
Okay, what's the purpose? What, what's the point? So, okay, he throws oh. it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Uh. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. Oh, wow. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop, that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going, and then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. That, then that's not a prison game in it. Wait, how the fuck they, that small room evolved to this shit? What the fuck? Man, it's like some... Wait, is that a telephone booth? Am I like going into the matrix or something? Oh my god, I am new. Oh my god. Hello, Morpheus. Get me out of the matrix. <laughs> That's some rush hour jokes, man. I am you. Uh. It's a conversation. And so this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Being completely still, why did more show the fuck? I'm gonna go with 3 man, 3 is like always the best answer I'm still me, but it's not someone else. Remember to enjoy being who you are right now. It won't last. Oh shit. Uh. Yeah, you know what? Tree, tree, me. Tree is always meaningful. What? No, I think I'm the first person to call back. Sincere, I guess. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Yes. How does that work? It's time to bullshit him. Uh, it will make sense. Some some trippy shit, man. Uh, wow. <laughs> I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? Mm -hmm. So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? Uh, okay. To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. Hello. <laughs> You'll notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create as a result. <laughs> yeah, big ass actually cheesy man. <laughs> uh, no. Wow. Sounds like one of my close friends man. Hey come on man. Tell me you come on. Stop being such an evil. Uh needs to be watched. Alright, you can tell me later. Uh stop. What, what am I huh? You're fucking we're all just humans. Uh, wait, where's the bin? Ah, uh, yeah. Ooh, so many books. After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you and eventually cohere into something meaningful. Darling, let me tell you something. I know that Koda really liked this game. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was, like, grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant smile on his face. Uh -huh. Oh, I think, oh, yeah. I, I, sorry, I had a, I had a brain freeze. Uh, okay. That. Really, again? Come on, man. <laughs> one's house is a lot like one soul. Ah. Uh, true. 
I guess. Oh my god, no. I just wanna run away to the top. Uh, door on top. He's not even reading the fucking books. How are they getting messy, man? What the I'm glad fuck? he made this. I'm glad he found some peace. Oh, shut the fuck up. You are not the one doing the fucking chores, man. But, of course, it can't last. The music stops, uh. your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. That's Again, good. you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. What dark space? Nice, I need to scare me, man. What dark space? House is too transparent, man. House is too fucking transparent. I can't live in that house. What the fuck? Your bedroom can be seen by everyone else. What, what, what kind of... Ah, the land post. Ah. Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. Okay. This one gets a bit goofy. Um... Seminar, huh? About halfway through the game, the perspective shifts. What the fuck? And you play as the teacher. And suddenly, you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. Oh, thank you. Uh, the key, how's that? The TV, no effort. I can't press 2, right? Oh! I can! What the fuck? Big <laughs> I still love you! What?! Why the option so weird? Thank goodness all of you have perceived me and why GG is not a thing alive. You are torturing yourself trying to find the right... Tree, son. Uh... <laughs> you understand that you won't? Yeah, happy until you. What? Uh, two, I guess. Why are they highlighted and not? Everybody wants to do that, it's Haha, just kidding. That's right. What if I'm not good? Oh, let's warm them. Let's go. Everyone. I felt pretty hard for this one. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. To uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. I think about this game a lot these days. Okay. Uh -huh. This one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's Ooh. twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this. And it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little <laughs> strange at the time. Can I jump off? No, I can't. Playing as me. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. 
Well, hello there. <laughs> Where's the button? Hello. Fuck you, the way I'm using it. Come on. Do it again. Uh, I like you. That's right. That's too bad. That's what I say to her. And I'm gonna pick a home. Pick a home. What the fuck? Bring a home. Yeah. Uh. Uh. 